welcome to a new game for this channel, and it's a new game in general. It's called The Cycle, it's in alpha, and it's in very active development. So obviously when we talk about whether or not it's worth playing, we're not going to be pointing at bugs and making snooty faces. This is about a game in flux. Things are developing. So does where this game is headed look like a good direction? So The Cycle is a new IP from a studio called Jaeger Development GmbH. And if you know anything about international businesses, that GmbH will tell you that this is a German company. In fact, yes, they are based in the fine city of Berlin. They've worked on a bunch of projects before, but most notable is probably the well-regarded Spec Ops The Line from 2012. So you're probably looking at the footage now and making judgments. It's people dropped into a landscape, and yeah, the drop pod view does unfortunately feel a bunch like Satisfactory's own start. But it's 2019, so your brain is probably screaming Battle Royale in large letters. I'm going to ask you to try not to think BR with regards to the cycle. If you want a touchstone to another game, you might find something more towards the Division's Dark Zone experience to be more helpful. It's described as PVEVP, and that order seems intentional. It's not a pure, there's a team over there, I'm already charging at them sort of experience. There are other things to do, contracts to fulfill, and influences outside of that particular match that affect what you might choose to do. You might gather resources, mine for stuff, or go off killing some NPC monsters. There are larger alpha monsters too, which provide a larger challenge and of course better rewards for killing them. Matches have a 20 minute cap, so they don't run for ages. And although you're dropped into the world, there are no weapons to be found lying around. No, the way to arm yourself in the cycle is through blueprints that are crafted outside the match Caution. in the main menu. You play some matches, kill some stuff, do some contracts and acquire resources that could be spent on unlocking blueprints for weapons. Equip that new blueprint, and while you're in match, as long as you earn enough money from killing stuff, you can request a gun be dropped in for you. None of that Battle Royale RNG in place here. So what's more, if you're playing solo and you see another player, you can opt to form a pact with them. This pacting, which seems like an awfully clumsy phrase, allows you to split revenues from working together and stop friendly fire. It can be dissolved as well, of course. There's a cooldown period after it's annulled, but everyone's on the same page when the gunfire starts flying. And while there's no contracting border a la BR games, there is an environmental hazard to concern yourself with. And in fact, it's a storm, and that draws further unhelpful, obvious comparisons to titles like Fortnite. By multiple prospectors. So unlike the mechanic of forcing players into a restricting zone, the cycle uses a concept more familiar to Titanfall 2 players, that of a dropship that you absolutely want to be on when it leaves. I also see people making the comparison to Firefall, another well-regarded game that unfortunately I never played. But from what I understand, that was open world in a larger sense, but looking at footage I can understand the comparison at least. The cycle being first person, of course, to the Firefall's third person, though. If you're intrigued, as I was when I first heard about this game, well, you can sign up on their site to get an alpha key. As I said, it's all in flux. The first alpha gameplay reveal was only done in September of last year, and we're getting new builds all the time for these closed alpha tests. The tests themselves have been a little out of the ordinary, too. I believe the longest has been three days, but last weekend's test was basically Friday night into Saturday morning. So the footage you're seeing in this video is a combination of a few tests, so you'll probably see some differences and some progress in areas. I'm guessing there aren't many people with alpha keys at the moment. I believe their Twitter referenced having a thousand players online for the first time recently. So I'm also guessing these narrow tests are partly about getting those people all to connect at once rather than spread out. I'll of course link their website and their sign-up page in the description below. So I've played a bit in a few of their tests, only in squad mode it must be said, and I've experienced a little of what this game has to offer in its current state. I'd say the first point of friction for squad play is certainly the lack of communication tools. As far as I know, there's no in-game voice chat at the moment. In fact, the in-game text chat was disabled for their last test, so the absence of things like the fairly revolutionary non-verbal ping system made famous by Apex Legends, it becomes slightly frustrating. 
the four-player team often becomes like a flock of sheep, sort of spreading out until someone looks like they know what they're doing and then everyone just follows along. Ping system and voice chat would seem essential future additions. The gameplay is enjoyable when it presents itself, and by that I mean that sometimes I felt like there wasn't enough to do for a full team in a specific area. The more structured or urbanised areas look different, but apart from picking up credit scraps, I did feel sort of lost. I'm hoping this feeling passes as I get used to setting my own priorities and trying some single player. The gunplay feels more problematic. There's a definite lack of punch and weight to engaging in combat. The visuals and design of the hard surface models here are good, but the sound especially seems to undersell what's happening here. I've only tried a few of the weapons, yeah, limited time, limited access and so on, but I've not tried any option that made me feel like, hey, that's really fun to use. The visual effects on killing enemies are well done, it looks impressive, but the feedback for almost everything else seems underwhelming. On the idea of pacting, which I'm never going to find a pleasant term, the fact that it only does seemingly apply in single player games does also seem to mean that in squad games, every other player you see is an instant enemy. That initial are they friendly moment that the system seems to want to promote does seem absent in squad games. It felt like players shot on sight, you want to get the upper hand, so firing first with hand nose is the best way to do that. Perhaps this is partly a symptom of an undereducated player base. They don't know what they have to lose by getting wiped now rather than lasting later in the game. I'm sure I don't really know the answer to that question either. But I'd hope that there'll be more balance on this point. Something the Division handles well in the Dark Zone is the idea that anyone could be an enemy. But if you're carrying loot that you really want to extract and keep, then you don't always take that fight on first sight. There are more cosmetic things too. Probably the most serious of them being that the FOV is not really wide enough for me at its max setting but I'm very aware that such design decisions are probably not finalised, so I'm not going to nitpick. One example of this is, say, movement speed. We buffed the sprint speed significantly the last test, as it did feel lethargic when moving around. Though I have subsequently found out that there are movement skills that I had no idea about, so that does give me something to check out the next test. There really does feel like there's a kernel of something interesting and enjoyable in this cycle. I can see the development move forward and I'm excited to see the devs build on the positives of what's already been created. I'd like the open world with the things to do other than loot and kill other players. I like the influences from outside of the current match that govern the choices that I make when a match takes place. What factions do I want to work for? What rewards do I want that will allow me to craft the blueprints that I want to make? I also like the tension on seeing another team sizing each other up, and is it worth taking that fight right now? I would like to see that fleshed out more for squad play. So, is it worth playing? As long as you understand that this is a closed alpha, then yeah, I'd say spend a bit of time in their tests, offer them some constructive feedback, and become part of the community that helps sculpt this promising title. I'm interested to know what you think of the cycle though. Have you heard of it before? Have you played in any of their tests? Do you think this is the sort of game that you might check out? Leave a comment below right now and let me know. I'll be reading every single one of them. Please do leave some feedback, a thumb, a tap of the old sub button. It helps me make videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care. Time to get off this rock. Hurry up or you're in for a long... Now buckle up, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Uh, one over five.
Facilities need power. Easy. 